I am so excited to introduce to you our first speaker. This woman, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Her message touched my heart so deeply, um, has been a profound, deep spiritual reminder for me on my own path. Uh, she is a woman of great wisdom. I am so excited to introduce to you Julie Wood with the talk, Set Yourself Free from Good Girl to Goddess. Let's unmute everybody and give Julie a huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got muted. <laughs> Do you remember making these dried flowers? You would take a really beautiful flower and get a very big book. Put it inside with some tissue paper and then find another really heavy book to layer on top for some extra pressure. And what do you get? This. These are awful. It's dry, colorless, flat, lifeless. And this is what is happening to women. We are squashed. We are squashed in the pages of a good girl rule book and then layered on top are all of these family rules. Now, the good girl rules came down through the generations are all the rules that tell women how to make it in a man's world, who we can be, what it's okay to say, what emotions we can express so that nobody feels threatened and no one gets uncomfortable. And then the family rules are the rules that tell you how to belong in your family. And the crazy thing about these rules is that they live in our nervous systems. So the one who enforces them is us. So you may be feeling like this. Maybe you're asking yourself, oh, why am I such a people pleaser? How do I get in touch with the truth in my heart? How do I live my life? And if you're asking those questions, just know that you're not alone. Women can get stuck for decades, even a lifetime. In fact, one of the top regrets of the dying is I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me. I was one of those women who was stuck for decades, for four decades. I followed all the rules. I went into corporate America working in advertising. I started at the agency in Los Angeles that did Barbie doll. And I moved on to work on the Frito-Lay business selling Lay's Doritos and Cheetos in the world. And all along, I, my heart was never in it. And I knew there was something else I wanted to be doing, but I just was so disconnected from myself. I had no idea what that was. And so 18 years later, I was still working in advertising. I was 42 years old. These people have teams. Uh -huh. It's like they have teams of professionals. Now, lucky for me, right around that time, a girlfriend said to me, hey, Julie, do you like bald guys? And I do, I think they're really cute. And I had been divorced for a decade. So I was all about the setups. So she introduced me to this guy named Russ and he was really special. And it was on our fourth date. We'd known each other two weeks. We were at Sushi Yashuda on West 72nd Street. I was probably eating a salmon avocado roll. And I said to him, oh, I really wanna change my life. I just, I don't know what to do. And you know what his response was? Well, you know, you could quit your job and sell your apartment and travel the world. And I know someone who'd go with you. And so we spent the rest of the night talking about all the places we could go. We could hike the Machu Picchu Trail and visit the pyramids in Egypt and visit the Mayan sites in Guatemala. Anyway, I went on and on. And when I woke up the next morning, I was so clear I was going. And three months later, that's what I did. 
I quit my job. I sold my apartment. I threw my skinny jeans into storage, bought some cute camping gear, threw it in Russ's two-door Jeep Wrangler, and off we drove into the sunset all the way from New Jersey to Pennsylvania. And as we went, I felt like I was throwing the good girl rule book out the window. And it's funny because I got really little pushback. I think everyone just thought I was nuts. I've known this guy for three months and for sure I'd be home for Christmas. Well, come Christmas time, we were in California and I sent an email home to my family saying, hey, guess what? We're driving into Mexico and then we're gonna keep going all the way into South America so I won't be home for Christmas. Well, I got an email back. Hold on, what about us? Aren't we important? I mean, you have a grandmother who's getting older, your nieces and nephews wanna see you. You really should come home for Christmas. And that's when I realized, because my initial reaction was, oh my gosh, I have to go home. I had forgotten to throw the family rule book out the window. Well, it wasn't that easy of a decision because I love my family and I like spending time with them. But I took the time to drop to my heart and connect. And I got really clear. A good girl goes home for Christmas with the family. And I was going to Mexico and South America and off I went and this became a five year journey around the world. We visited 69 countries. We got married in Kathmandu, Nepal. It was amazing and I was starting to learn that we are not here on this earth to make decisions and make other people happy. We're here to live joyfully in contribution from our hearts. And I really discovered the power of living this way about three years into the journey. Russ and I had driven all the way to Peru. We were in the Peruvian Amazon at an ayahuasca retreat center. And ayahuasca, if you're not familiar with it, is a plant medicine that helps people connect to their hearts and to expand their consciousness. And I'd been there a few times, so I was volunteering in the medicine space. And the lead shaman asked me one night, would you like to sing a song at the end of ceremony? And my initial reaction was no. <laughs> I've never sung a solo in my life. I don't even sing in the shower. I don't wanna do this, except that there was a part of me that really did. And I'd recently learned this beautiful medicine song in Portuguese. So come the end of ceremony, he called me up. I went up to the front of this big ceremony space with a palm thatch roof and screens that let in all the sounds of the Amazon, the frogs and the insects. And I sat down on this raised platform next to my friend Loretta and I started to sing. And I don't think anyone heard me because I was so self-conscious. I was singing so quietly and thinking, and it was a really bad idea. But then I felt a hand on my back right behind my heart. It was my friend Loretta. And it was as if she was silently saying, drop into your heart, sing from there. And so that's what I did. Hey, 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 Claudia, salve a lua cheia. And it was as if divine love just used me as this vessel to pour itself into the space. And it was so powerful and so beautiful that some people burst into tears. And when I finished, people burst into applause, which never happens in a ceremony. And the lead shaman, he announced, ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the birth of a medicine woman. Looking back, it was in that moment that I really connected to the power of the love in my heart, the power of my voice to influence and uplift others, and the power of a sister who had my back and helped me connect to my gifts. And what's so cool is now five years later, I'm a transformational coach for women. I'm a woman speak circle leader, supporting women to live and express from their hearts. And I'm telling you, this is so much more satisfying than selling cheese puffs in the world. And I wanna let you know that your heart can do this for you too. 
your heart can connect you to your deepest gifts, to the medicine you're here to share in the world. It's crazy because we have this part of us that is so natural, that's here to be a guiding light in our lives. And we ignore it because we're taught that following our hearts is foolish. We think the heart is just a muscle, but it is the path to your deepest soul growth. And when you listen to your heart, it connects you to your divine power. I wanna share with you how I came to claim this life of freedom, to break free of the rules, to live from my heart and share myself in the world so that you can do this too. There are two things. One, it starts with rethinking who you are. When you start to ask yourself, who am I to choose myself? Who am I to do what I want instead of what they want? You are not a good girl. You are a goddess. There is a power, call it divine intelligence, God, goddess, whatever you wanna call it. You are a part of it, we all are, and you access it through your heart. And this is radical self-love living from this place. We think courage is skydiving, but really it's claiming your power and living from your heart. So number two, is fiercely protect this part of you. You need to have really strong boundaries. And I'd like to share with you what a teacher taught me. When someone challenges you, you ask the divine, is it true I need to put them between you and me, between me, like between the truth and my heart? And I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a no. And then all you have to say is I'm following my internal guidance. I hope you understand. That's it. You don't owe anyone an explanation. You are your own sovereign being and you cannot be a goddess when you're following someone else's rules. So I encourage you connect to the goddess within you and live from that place. Miracles and blessings will happen in your life and in the lives of those you're here to serve. I'd like to leave you with the words of Kashi Urbaniak. Name one good girl who's changed the world. You can't because she can't. And I'll add, but as a goddess, you can. Thank you. First of all, uh, to, to, we are really big on providing specific celebrations for women, right, um, it, as a way of celebrating them. So in the chat, I want to encourage you to lean in and share with her what is something that you loved about this message, about what she said or how she said it, and give her that gift of you seeing her and reflecting back to her her brilliance. Okay, I would love for you just to be generous, lean in, put in the chat. What did you see? What did you love? And I'd love to open up to one person to provide a short brief because we're going to move on to our next speaker and I want to make sure we got time. But that are a, a celebration for Julie. What did you love? What moved you? You can just unmute yourself and jump in. Oh, I love the, uh, I love the, the it's, is it true I need to put them in between you and me? I just love that idea that I should be following my own internal guidance system and not that anybody else determine where I'm going. Yes, gorgeous. Yes, thank you. Beautifully celebrated. That part also for me, stunning, stunning. Such a fantastic, clear inquiry. I'm just, Julie, I'm so, I'm just, just flipping fantastic. Just it's so gorgeous. What for me, I'm just going to give one brief one. That moment when you, and the whole thing is a treasure. It's just a treasure of a talk. 
and message and connecting with you and seeing you in your fullness and all of it. In that moment when you transition from, hang on, I wrote it down. Um, I'm, you know, I'm here to tell you, you can do this too. And it was like, we were deep in the glory of your storytelling and all of a sudden you're just right here. And it was such a powerful moment of transmission and locking in with us and connecting. It was like, I was so wow, touched. You were so, your generosity of your heart in that moment and the connection was so profound. So, so beautiful. Let's give her another huge, huge, huge round of applause. Oh, 